After my iPhone SE, the 2016 version, lost support, I was left alone, cold, scared, and I didn't know what to do until some great commenters suggested I try an iPhone 6. So I purchased an iPhone 6 and it was only 35 bucks. Now don't get me wrong, my iPhone 13 that I could go back to is a wonderful device. It's so wonderful in fact, I've made multiple videos about how much I hate the phone because it's so darn addictive and everything about it's so amazing. And I think it's an issue that we all struggle with, finding our way in this world where we're given all this information, all this data on our phones, but we just don't know how to manage it properly. So instead of managing it effectively we all just spend way too much time scrolling on our phones or liking pictures on Instagram or watching YouTube videos or whatever it may be so the iPhone 6 is my latest attempt in this world of distractions to try and get myself away from distractions and the reason I think this device might work is not only because it's just the best feeling phone I've ever felt I can't believe how good these things felt but also the reason I think it's going to work is because it's two iOS versions old, maybe even three at this point. So it doesn't have the latest support from all the greatest apps and it's only got 16 gigabytes of data. But also I think that there's something to purchasing a phone with the intent to use it a lot less. It has all the things that I need. It has a decent camera. It can send iMessages and it has a pretty decent battery life. So I think it might be a perfect mix for me and what I need out of a phone. And when the phone came in, I was really excited to get it unboxed and open because it's just like Christmas day when you buy new technology or at least new to you technology. I like that feeling. After that really seamless unboxing experience, I'm going to take the SIM card out of my iPhone 13 and plop it into this thing and we'll see how it goes. So last night I plugged my phone in, went to bed and I woke up and it was just, it was lagging like crazy. It, it was basically unusable. You would click an app and it would take like five minutes to finally respond to opening the app. And I was, I was wondering why that was happening. I kept getting the notification that my storage was taken up and this thing only has 16 gigabytes, which is, probably something I should have been aware of, which it's not a big deal. I mean, 16 gigabytes is plenty if I don't have any other apps on here, but I have downloaded a bunch of iMessage messages onto my phone and I can't really control that because I want my messages to be saved in the cloud. But I was I was looking and it was totally full. So I, I ended up getting it cleared. And I think what it was, was I was, there was an update that I downloaded that was taking up all of the available space. I updated the phone and now, it's working perfectly fine again. Very, I just love the feel in the hand of this phone. It's so thin, it's so light, and so I love, it feels so soft. So, so far, still liking the phone a lot. No real problems with it. Uh, cameras are okay, they're good enough. And the only, yeah, the only thing is that storage. So I would probably, if I go back in time, I would get a model with more storage, but I don't know how much more that would cost. So I use two, two different apps to track my runs. The first one is Strava. And the second one is Map My Run. And both of those require you to sign in. So I downloaded both of them, I tried both of them, and I can't log into either one of them with my account. And the reason is because I'm running an iOS that's two generations older. Basically what that means is that I have to go out with this phone to track my run because I can't, I just can't get in on this one and I can't keep trying because I, I gotta go run. And I've been trying literally all afternoon to try to get my accounts on here and it won't let me. I'm gonna use this phone for like, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and then I'm gonna switch right back to this one. The reason this is happening is because I signed up with my Apple ID, and that feature was implemented several iOS generations after the one I'm on right now. So it's the end of day two, and I've really enjoyed using the phone all day. I didn't use it very much. My screen time said it was like an hour and 54 minutes, but it's not true. I used YouTube for like 45 minutes, and for 20 of those minutes, I just accidentally left the screen on on this phone. And the rest of it only adds up to like 20 minutes. So I think I only use, I use my phone for way less than an hour today, but it says hour 45 minutes. I'm still struggling with the storage problem. When this thing runs out of storage, it is basically unusable. It's really frustrating. The reason it's happening is because Apple and all their infinite wisdom is downloading messages and photos as much as they possibly can stuff inside of the phone. So what that does is it takes up literally every single gigabyte of data on the phone. And then once the phone has no storage, it becomes completely unusable. You can't even open apps. And if they do open, they are basically unusable. And if you were to accidentally turn the phone off and to sleep it for a half second, then the, the app won't be open next time you open the phone, which could be a half second later. 
I think this is an intentional thing that Apple's doing. They offered a lot of phones with very little storage and everybody, at least I do, a lot of people use iCloud to back up their data. So I think that they're sort of doing this on purpose where they download a bunch of data onto your phone and say, oh, well, your phone's out of storage. Uh, you could delete the phone, you could delete the photos and stop using iCloud and you know you could potentially lose all your data or you could upgrade your phone. I think that's exactly what's happening. It's really frustrating because I, there's no way for, for me to stop the, the photos being downloaded onto the phone unless I turn off iCloud photos, which then makes the phone unusable. I'm left with two options. I either turn off iCloud photos and all my photos could potentially be lost or they're just a lot more difficult to access. Or the other option is I leave that on and I can't use the phone. That's where Apple's put me because there's no other options. It's either that or that. Very frustrating. But other than that, <laughs> I got that turned off and it's been working great again. So I really, I really enjoy the phone. It's just that backing up the photos, I might just have to do that like once a week. And while the flip phone thing is something I've tried before, it just isn't going to work with my current job and the way that I have it set up. At least the flip phone that I bought. If you have any suggestions on flip phones that actually work well with group text messages, please tell me. I would love to test those out as well. Leave those in the comment section down below. But with the current flip phone I have, it just doesn't work with group text messages. The voicemail part of it was a little unreliable for me. So I'm sort of stuck with older iPhones, which I don't really care because these are also really fun phones to look at. So I have been using this phone now on and off for several weeks. I will go a few days using it, a few days going back to my iPhone 13. And just, I wanna see which phone is the best phone for what I want. Obviously the best phone is the iPhone 13. I think we all know that. But the iPhone 6 offers a lot of really good things that I wanna talk about. I haven't made my final decision yet. I wanna take some more time. I feel like I often rush into these. I use it for a week and I fall in love with it. And then you know, a, a week or two later, something happens where I just end up going back to my iPhone 13 and I never go back. This phone, I'm trying to ease myself into it. I'm trying to just see what it's like to live with this phone. Is it reliable enough? Do I trust it? Am I willing to leave home at, with this as my only phone? And if I'm not gonna be back for a day or if I'm gonna be back in six hours, do I feel comfortable enough leaving my house with this phone? And that's something that I'm still working through. I'm actually headed out on a business trip tomorrow and I, I'm going to bring this phone as my main phone. I'm gonna bring my iPhone 13 as a backup just in case. I'm just gonna leave that charged without the SIM card in it, just leave it in my bag. And if I feel like I need to go back to it just in, because of the reliability of this thing, then I will go back. But this thing has been re really, really reliable. I have a few gripes with it. The biggest one being the iCloud situation. I talked about that in another video linked up here or up here. And basically what happened there is, like you heard before, the storage, this thing only has 16 gigabytes of storage, which is an oversight on my part. I should have just gotten one with 32 gigabytes. It wouldn't have been much more money than the 16 gigabyte. I wasn't thinking, I just got the cheapest one. I really think that that's something that I made a bit of a mistake on. So going forward, if I decide that this isn't the phone for me, I will make sure that the next phone I get has more storage, especially if it's an iPhone. Other than that, the only other problems I've had with it have been mostly due to the storage filling up. The phone gets really laggy and it's, it's just unusable. You, you click an app and you sit there for five minutes and it doesn't process anything. You click it again and it's still processing the first click. I will say that from my perspective, this phone actually has a lot going for it. The rear camera is pretty good. It's again, it's an iPhone camera, so it's only going to be so good. I know the iPhone 13 Pro camera is is good. It's actually really good, especially for a smartphone. It's really good. I'm not gonna lie. Again, it's not as good as this camera, and it never will be. And I think that that's sort of what this phone is at. It's a really solid camera. The front camera kind of sucks. I'm not gonna lie. But the rear camera is totally usable and I don't have any problems using that. I'm not going to take any important pictures with the front camera anyways. I don't know when that would happen. I take mostly just videos and pictures like this or like this. And so I love that part of it. That is a huge upgrade from the flip phone that I have used in the past. And also the access to media. This phone, if I wanna to listen to a podcast or if I wanna to listen to some music, I can do it on this phone. The speakers aren't that loud. I am not an audiophile by any stretch of anybody's imagination. I listen to 80%, maybe even 90% of content through these little speaker grills right here. You see that? That's exactly, that's where I listen to all my content out of. 
and you can hate me for it you can love me for it whatever it may be i am not an audiophile by any means so this phone has a decent speaker setup i like on the iphone 13 i have this little speaker up here too as well as a much louder speaker down here so this one obviously gets way louder but this phone is like seven or eight years newer so i would expect it to get a lot louder i keep coming back to this phone and i think the biggest reason i keep coming back to it is that it doesn't have a lot of apps on it i have chosen not to download apps and also downloading apps is a bit of a pain if i don't have the space i can't download them at all but i think i've basically figured that out but also just getting to the app store and sort of using the apps on this phone it's a little clunky it's a little slow and for that part of it i do kind of like because I'm not going to be able to sign into stuff as quick on this phone. I'm not going to be as tempted to pick this phone up and just start scrolling when I'm in line at Chipotle and just looking at nonsense because I've elected to basically leave this phone as stock. The only app that I have on this phone that I downloaded myself is Strava and the Authenticator app. Those two apps are the only two apps that I've downloaded for this phone. And I really like that because it's forced me to make sure that I'm on my phone a lot less. And that's ultimately what this is all about. Trying to find the balance between the great things that smartphones have given us, calculators in our pockets, calendars in our pockets, just like those simple things. I like having those simple things and having them be really easy and seamless to use. Those are great. Cameras in our pockets. All those things are really important to me. And also text messaging. I like to text message. I text my friends. The vast majority of my communication with my friends is through text message. So I like having a phone that's easy to text on. It's quick to text on. I will say I definitely use this phone much more than I use the flip phone but I use it way less than I use the iPhone 13. And it's weird, it, it's crazy how you can be with this phone, I will go back and I've gone back and forth between the two. And it's crazy how quick you will pick that iPhone 13 back up. You will just start using it like you have used it your whole life and you you don't learn anything, it seems like a lot of times. I feel for myself, I'm not really learning anything. I almost have to put that physical barrier of slightly less attractive phone. Although this phone feels so much better in the hand, I will, I will always say that. And this phone actually is bent, which is hilarious because I don't know if you remember the Ben gate. Uh, this phone is absolutely bent, which I think is really funny. But this phone is definitely, the screen isn't as nice, it's not as smooth, not as fluid. The apps, this is running iOS 12, we're currently on iOS 16, so all the apps are significantly uglier. And it's it's interesting to see just how much more attractive they've gotten throughout the years, and how much more usable they are. And my final thing that I really love is the, the fingerprint. I love the thumbprint, it's so great, it's so quick and easy, you could do it without looking at the phone, and now it's unlocked, I really like that. I like Face ID. Face ID is a cool, interesting feature, but there's something about Touch ID. I grew up basically with Touch ID. Those were my first iPhones all had Touch ID, so I really, I like that feature. Is it the greatest feature ever? No, but I do kind of like it, and I'm not gonna lie, I like the physical home button too. Although I do wish this one was an iPhone 6S, because I think that basically would all be the same, except for 3D Touch. And 3D Touch is amazing. I loved having 3D Touch. Irregardless of all that stuff though, I will say that this phone covers so many of my bases. If you are somebody that is looking to downgrade their phone, I'm still working on my full review. I wanna use this thing for closer to a month or two months before I give you my final thoughts on if this is the phone that I'm going to be using. Uh, if you look at the Scott Schroeder channel, you may see me using it throughout those videos. Something I will say that is, if you are looking to do something similar where you wanna reduce your screen time, but you still want the benefits of a smartphone, consider getting something like this and putting some pretty harsh restrictions on it. When it's your normal everyday phone, I think that those restrictions are a lot more flexible. But when you buy a phone and you decide to use it a lot less, especially a phone that's not quite as nice, not quite as fast, not quite as new, I think that you're much more likely to use it a lot less. And also it's 30 bucks, 35 bucks. That's, a, that's so wonderful. You know, I have this thought about these phones and there's a lot of processing power in this phone. And this is 30 bucks. All this processing power is just gone, it's like thrown away. So I wonder if there was a way, this is just an idea I had, I wonder if there's a way to sort of hook up all these phones and use them as one collective processing unit all these older phones that nobody uses anymore, plug them in and use them as one collective processing unit because these things are remarkably power efficient. They're not like desktop computers in the sense that they pull lots of wattage. And I understand why we wouldn't do that with older computers because of the power draw, but these things don't draw a lot of power. So that's an idea I had. If you're really smart and it makes sense, you should do something with that. Just thank me. You can take all the credit if you'd like. Thank you guys for watching the video. I will see you in the next one. This has been Scott with Techno Eclipse. Peace out.